Hello, D. Eamon Colm. This is the practitioner here. Uh, I'm an agnostic, so, um, and the only reason I'm an agnostic is because M theory um, gives a, uh, a slight uh, possibility, um, you know, via mathematics. It does suggest that an art a universe could be created artificially, um, i.e., uh, its, its initial, um, how shall we say, its initial start could be uh, done artificially and then left to its own design, uh, you know, left to evolve on its own. And from that, um, you know, uh, and that was according to the BBC documentary, uh, Horizons documentary, Parallel Universes. So if that is possible, then it means that our universe could have been created by an advanced scientist, but it doesn't necessarily prove that it is. Uh, the point being is that, um, uh, you know, if that possibility exists, but, uh, you know, from the mathematics, it, me it makes the entire um, debate about a god versus not a god or a creator versus not a creator 50-50 i.e. deism versus atheism is about 50-50, which makes me an agnostic. Had there been not even the slightest bit of evidence for deism, I would have rejected it along with the others and, um, and proposed myself a complete atheist as opposed to an agnostic. Anyway, that being aside, I would like to um, raise, uh, I would like to uh, entertain uh, a little debate purely, on a de uh, purely as a, as a light-hearted, fun ex uh, intellectual exercise, um, as, uh, but, you know, something worth thinking about. Um, you and uh, you you did make a very good point to um, well that that uh, great video by the way um, debunking Zakot he uh, you know I I chuckled a little bit at some of the stuff he had to say but um, you and he both raised a very interesting point and that is the issue of perception as you said um, without a claim there is uh, without a positive claim that we are all misperceiving the universe uh, or uh, or that we are perceiving the universe as re as real mass perception um, we cannot um, we uh, we cannot say one way or the other, uh, that something exists or not. Um, that being said, I would like to um, ask a quick question of you. Uh, this is just purely for clarification purposes. When you said that anecdotal evidence was inappropriate, and I agree with you on that, um, each person, uh, th th now this is a, gets back into Descartian logic, and I, this has never been my strong suit, so uh, you know I would very much like a, 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 some clarification. But theoretically speaking, is it possible uh, uh, no, let me rephrase that. Um, how would mass perception work if hypothetically um, I was imagining uh, you and uh, uh, let me let me let me just think of the proper way to phrase this. Epistemology required uh, uh, um, empirical science requires replication from multiple sources for something to be real. Mass perception would indicate that the world exists. Now the problem that I am curious about is uh, just hypothetically what if I am uh, um, what evidence would be required uh, you know if I'm relying on outside evidence you know from from multiple different sources like the fact that I see you um, how is that uh, how does mass perception um, automatically assume that the world is real. And the reason I'm asking this is that maybe, uh, purely hypothetically, the, um, the fact that I've seen both you and Zakot, it could have been possible that my mind was creating this out of something else, uh, a, a pure illusion. I'm not trying to suggest that there is any proof for this, I'm just curious as to what evidence would be required to demonstrate that the world is real um, if all I am relying on uh, in other words, if I'm relying on the fact that um, that, uh, that the outside world is real, uh, I have to say, okay, say for example, uh, everyone posits the world is real, but then the question is, well, I have a, but, but you know, I am hearing you make that posit, so therefore, you know, or, or appear to be hearing you make that posit, so therefore, what evidence would be required for you to make, the, for you to be able to demonstrate that without it being, uh, without it being outside evidence? I.e., is there some other form of evidence besides uh, seeing things in front of me or hearing things that could demonstrate that the world was real? The reason I ask this is because uh, to say that the um, the world is real, uh, to say that um, I see the world, uh, you know, uh, I see the world out there and therefore it is real, uh, but you know. <laughs> You know, the, you know, to see you making the pause that the world is real, and therefore, you know, and my question is, well, how are you not an act of my imagination? And then you provide other proof outside my body. Isn't that kind of like a closed circular logic? It's sort of like, um, uh, uh, you know, I am, I am being asked by an apparent vision outside of me to believe that it is real, and then being presented other evidence by that same vision. Um, 
you know, which, which could also be flawed under that same constraint. Is there a way to assess uh, the fact that there are multiple people out there? You know, i.e., is, is there a way to properly empirically assess without, you know, viewing evidence outside of me that the world outside is a, um, you know, you know, like, I'm, can you explain Descartes logic enough to me, uh, to, you know, uh, or Occam's razor to demonstrate that you are real or that the world outside of me is real and that I am not the only person alive? Um, or that, you know, that I'm not uh, creating this as purely an illusion in my own mind. You know, is there a way to demonstrate this um, without having to rely on evidence outside of me? Is there a logical constraint which would make it more likely that the rest of the world was outside besides, um, besides just me? I mean, uh, that whole thing that Descartes said about um, I could either assume that I have a very, very good imagination or that, the, uh, or that other pe beings exist outside of me. Well, what is it that makes um, the other beings existing outside of me a simpler explanation than I have a very, very good imagination? So, I mean, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, and I'm even assuming that Descartes was even real. I mean, for all I know, that could have come out of my, mo my own mind. So the question is, which, uh, what logic requires it that, the, that there being an outside world is simpler an explanation than uh, me just simply having a very good imagination and imagining everything that I see as part of some sort of elaborate hoax of, of some completely other world, which uh, is nothing like the world which I'm seeing in front of me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the Occam's razor and the logic here about this. This is purely a, um, a thing of philosophy which I have been difficult to wrapping my head around. Now, the second thing, which is purely for fun, and, and again, all of this is purely for fun, I just like to understand how this works. The second thing, which is purely for fun, is, um, now, I want to make something perfectly clear. When I state, when I ask all this, I, I, I am taking the explanation that the world is real. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking you this in the first place. I would have just rejected it as being completely, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be asking you otherwise. So I grant, I grant that the world is real for this exercise. But at the same time, I'd like to know um, what epistemologically or logically, uh, you know, what logically makes the other one the simpler of the two explanations or the, or, or the, what is it that makes uh, other entities the least plural of the explanation, uh, the least plural or the simpler of the two explanations or the better of the two explanations than me just having an overactive imagination and acting along with it? I don't know. Now, the second thing I'd like to posit is that, uh, okay, assuming that we take that the world is actually real, this is just purely, uh, this is just purely a, uh, an intellectual exercise and I'd like your feedback on this. Um, now, assuming that the world is real, or assuming that we have a mass perception, assuming that every entity, you, me, every other human being that, uh, that is postulated, the, the whole six billion of us, actually exist. You said that the world as we know it is real due to mass perception, or you suggested that. Well, how many, uh, there, there have been over 90% of people who believed in a god at one point, believed that lightning was caused by various different gods or what have you. But we found that later not to be the case through science and empirical reasoning. Uh, just because of mass perception does not necessarily... Um, uh, 10,000 people could see a magic trick like uh, David Copperfield disappear the Statue of Liberty. That doesn't necessarily mean that he actually is doing that. So um, my question is, is it possible that we are seeing a three-dimensional solid universe when in fact something else is going on uh, that we are mistaking it for? Now, the evidence I would like to bring forward for this, uh, purely for a, a postulate, is as follows. In a Scientific American article, the fifth special report on physics, I believe it was, a, uh, this was a few years ago, they had an article in there called The Holographic Universe, and this talked about some recent work in which um, entropy had been determined uh, to be uh, growing in proportion uh, with black holes in proportion to their surface area as opposed to their uh, volume. And from, the and from the calculus, they had determined that the... Uh, the entire universe should theoretically uh, should by that be two dimensional, and something in thermodynamic information actually make us perceive ourselves as three dimensional, much like a hologram. Um, the second thing, of course, is though is uh, the fact that um, all matter seems to have both a wave and a particle form, and that very and uh, any time you observe, at least on the ma micro level. Um, you know, the individual particle, you do seem to have an uncertainty factor, you know, switching it between a wave or a particle. And so due to that uncertainty, isn't it possible that something in our buildup and observing at the macro level is causing us to perceive, um, you know, what's in what may be more information or uncertain as a solid, stable universe, considering as well that most of the 90% of the space in an atom is empty space anyway. Could we actually be perceiving it at a macro level as being solid when, in fact, it could be just mostly empty space uh, and the solid just being uh, between, say, electromagnetic fields or something like that and we're just misperceiving it uh, you know in the mass perception anyway just some questions I'd like your feedback this is purely an intellectual exercise
and I hope you enjoy. Toodle!